Rosie Hardy. We're just about to do the Q&A for August, September and just go over any of the comments that have come through. Uh, sorry it's a little bit late, but hopefully you'll find these really interesting. Uh, we do appreciate you making comments. Please carry on doing so and we will try and get a Q&A in whenever possible. Just a little bit of news before we start and that is that we are going to change the name of the channel and it's going to become Rosie Hardy Gardening. In this way we are able to cover a lot more plant material other than what is available from Hardy's Cottage Garden Plants. And whenever we do plant material that is available at Hardy's Cottage Garden Plants you will know and we will signpost you in the direction of Hardy's Cottage Garden Plants website. Do please remember, and I know a lot of you um, are either from different continents or from here, that there are times when plants are not available and plants are certainly go in and out of season here at Hardy's, especially if there is a run on a certain plant type. Please just bear with us because they do come back into being available perhaps two to three months after a video has come out. Okay, let's start with all the questions that we've got that have come in and there are quite a few of them, so bear with me. I am in Australia with winter nearly finished. I have a clump of penstemon that already began flowering and the flowering stems fell on an angle as we had had heavy winds for several days. I draped fine netting over them for those few days to fill to the wind, but it looked awful. I removed it once the wind had died back I'm going to try the technique you've shown here as the clump of penstemon is around one square meter. Should I divide the area up and create four or so staked smaller clumps or just stake around one large clump as you have shown? I have plenty of bamboo canes. Thanks again. Okay, so one thing I would recommend if something does get knocked over, then give a little bit of quick pruning. That way you then start with fresh material and yes, if you've got quite a large clump, go for one, but maybe put some bits in the middle so that you go with four or six canes around the outside and then put a cane or two in the middle so that you can create a mesh type effect and your plants will then grow up through those. My pen stemmons only flowers once. What am I doing wrong? I made a new border where the old Leylandi hedge was I know the soil probably isn't too good, but I thought penstemons didn't need good soil. There are many different types of penstemon. Some are repeat blooming. Occasional ones are only a one-off quite long season. So it will depend on what type you've got. No, they don't need to be that well fed, but if you've gone where there has been a Leylandi hedge, then there will be no goodness in there whatsoever. I would recommend giving the pen stem and a good prune back. Give it a mulch rather than a heavy feed, just a mulch. That will help with water retention and then hopefully it will come back and be really good for you. Thank you for the information on alliums. I absolutely love them. I look out for the three you have demonstrated. I try to go everything for the butterflies and bees and to watch them gorging on the alliums is a delight. Please could you let us know when the time of year we can obtain and plant them. With the perennial alliums, we tend to have those here at Hardy's at different times of the year. Mostly they will be available from late spring and that seasonally is now sort of April, May. But then we will carry on and have another lot midsummer and another lot late autumn. It is just a matter of looking on the website. Alliums, can you grow these from seeds? The answer to that is yes, you can, especially if they are the species types. But what you have to remember is they have to germinate, grow, create a large enough bulb at the base or however they are growing, and then become mature enough plants to actually flower. And I would say most alliums from seed to flower will take up to five years, maybe longer. Depends on how much time you've got to watch things grow. Hey, I got some crocosmias. They tend to get yellow leaves. Bad soil? I got gladioli that does the same. It's kind of annoying since they are easy plants to take care of. 
I think this sounds like perhaps not enough water and perhaps not enough food at the beginning of the year. And then if they do get the odd yellow leaf, cut it off. This is about alliums. Would the flowers be able to last in a vase? And are they cut and come again? Yes, they last in a vase. And no, they're not cut and come again, I'm afraid. You can dry the heads as well. I've always been told that Crocosmia like plenty of moisture, so it was most informative to learn the differences between the two types. One piece of information that would have been useful was why the plant should not be divided in the autumn. Yet there are only so many things I can fit into a video, and if we're trying to give you some information, then other information gets left out. Division in the autumn, you quite often divide it up incorrectly, throw, throwing away the good growing material and keeping the material that will not grow. So splitting in the spring, when you see it actively growing, you know where and what to keep. Hi there, thanks for the video. Could you give some advice on salvia peach parfait plug plants, please? Thanks in advance. Salvia peach parfait, not one we grow, but very, very similar to a lot of the other ones. Um, plug plants, you need to get them potted on as soon as you can, going up into a smallish, maybe a nine centimetre pot. Then when they're fully rooted, put on a load of growth, put them into a bigger plant or out into the garden. It depends on what season you're in. They should not be uh, potted or planted out into the garden in the winter. They will need to go into the garden in the spring. I'm so happy to see this video. Perhaps you could help me with my problem. So what she says, she does have the Crocosmia flora type of Crocosmia. I have three beautiful clumps that I planted three years ago. My problem is by the time they bloom, they have fallen over. Your advice would be most welcome. Thank you very much. Now this can be a problem with the Crocosmia flora types. They do tend to flop over, especially if they're slightly shady. So put them slightly further forward or use some sort of staking mechanism to hold them up and that will work quite well. Is it possible to overwinter salvia indoors? I'm at 8,500 in Colorado and my salvia are still in pots. Should I transplant in the ground against the house or is there a better way to keep them until next year? I would say as long as you keep them dry, it is possible to keep them indoors but they are probably better outside in their containers, moved to somewhere where they do not get too much rainfall on them. And if you do get quite cold, then you can put bubble wrap around the base of the actual container to insulate the container and then put horticultural fleece over the top of the salvia itself and just put them somewhere where they're not going to get too cold and too, or too wet for the winter months. Final question, uh, someone has seen the salvia video and wants me to talk about how to overwinter lavender. I'm always a bit afraid of pruning too much, but also don't want them to become too woody. Thank you. Um, can I just say this is the reason why we are changing it to rosy hardy gardening, because it means that I can talk about other plant material that is not in the Hardy's catalog. So lavender is something we do not do, but I am very happy to advise people as to what to do with lavenders. Lavenders, when they first go into the ground, are lovely, they look fresh, they flower. As soon as they flower, they should be given a haircut. So you should probably have a plant this height, the growth is here, that's all flower stem. Most people just cut off the flower stem. Go lower, go to at least halfway down the plant and then that will overwinter with a reasonable amount of foliage there as an evergreen plant. And then in the spring, when you see new shoots coming and wait till the frosts are gone, then give it another harder prune to those good fresh growths. That stops it from becoming woody. Thank you very much for listening and please do keep on supporting us. Remember to look for Rosie Hardy Gardening. Please subscribe. Thank you very much for listening.